Hello Anna, um, my name is Roderick and I am 64 years old. Um, first of all, thank you for putting up this channel. I think, um, I think you're providing a massive service for us all. Um, the, I haven't seen all the videos on here, but um, when I say that, all the videos I have seen are always thoughtful, um, considered, articulate responses um, to the crisis that we're in. So what would I like to say? Uh, what I see is an evolution, an evolution from the start of all this crisis in March and maybe going well definitely going back further than that but um, I'm going to try and stick with a chronology so going back to those early days in March uh, what I saw was an hysterical media certainly mainstream media motivated by a gotcha moment these breathy reporters making speeches and uh, pushing an agenda rather than providing light in a darkened room. They, they, they add nothing. Um, so I've been considering what's driving this descent into this madness and why contestable scientific data is enshrined in tablets of gold. Uh, I have to get personal. Um, when making an assessment into the value of the information being supplied to us, character, I think, comes into this. And motivation. So I have to be personal, and I look first of all at Neil Ferguson and his uh, modelling. Well, his modelling was proven to be wildly inaccurate in the foot and mouth epidemic and the supposed fly, uh, swine flu outbreak. We have uh, other key characters like Witty and Tam making statements that we're flattening the curve. We have a health secretary who personally I wouldn't trust to make me a cup of tea saying that we will be shut down for only three weeks. Remember these days? Inquiries, certainly I've made several inquiries and several comments to various MPs. But when they do respond, which isn't always, they respond with platitudes as if, you know, what do you know? Who are you? You're just one constituent or, or one member of the public. We are the voice. We are the leaders. We govern. And your opinions are valueless. Now, I'm not a man, a fearful man. Um, by nature, nurture or instinct. And I will not be cowed. My life has already been hugely disrupted along with everybody else's. But I will be not, I will not be run by fear. So who gains from all this? Who gains from all this di disruption? Who gains from 
the suppression of a democracy. It's chilling how obsequious giant tech companies have been towards China. It's chilling how the Bill and Belinda Gates Foundation will benefit billions from a marketable vaccine. How Mark Zuckerberg plans for a cashless society with all the manipulation and control that that entails. How Elon Musk speaks of microchips, implants. How Apple, led by Tim Cook, manufacture their products in questionable conditions in China. So our DNA is stored. Our preferences are sifted and sorted. Our health is used, our money, dependent on our compliance. We're aware, aren't we, of how China have manipulated their population. So their credit rating varies according to how they follow the... Uh, the great directive. If you don't play ball in their cashless world, you get downgraded. That should uh, that should send a chill down everybody's backs. So, how will a debt accrued in seven months, akin to that of either world war? and comparable to the righteous cause of the abolition of slavery in the 1815s from anywhere in the British Empire, which we only finished paying off in about 2014, I believe. Why is this virtually unmentioned? The blasé dolling out of a billion here, a trillion there. A, a, is there such a thing as a gazillion? I suspect if there isn't, it'll be made up soon. You know, it took a world war in 1939 to end a 10 year depression, a world depression. Millions died from that depression. It took that world war to galvanise industry and bring people back in terms of their economies. We as individuals are now the crop we are the harvest. We are now the product. So when our information is sold off, our government will replenish the coffers of the state. Our citizenry, stripped of British identity, we become the Borg a collective used and abused ready to accept anything all for the greater good of our overlords well I had great hopes in December of last year when a landslide victory from the Conservative Party brought what I believe to have been a conservative government to power. Well, whatever they are, they are conservatives. I hoped that there would have been conservative policies brought in. Personalities come in again. There were many people that I had high hopes of. But... 
I've contacted many of them. No response. No challenging of the narrative. It's sinister. It really is. Um, it really is. It's sinister. But, as I've said, I will not be cowed. I will not bow down. I won't. Thank you, Anna. If I haven't said it earlier, I really appreciate your your efforts and I appreciate all the videos that I've seen. Could I highlight three in particular? A man from Cornwall, um, a farmer from Scotland and a young lady from South West London I thought was very moving. And she's obviously very frightened. Um, my only words to all of them is stand up, be counted. Thank you. Bye.